Hey Track Gang, what's going on? This week's episode from the Beauville Newtown, well it's right over here. Stand by and we'll get into what's happening this week. <laughs> episode is week 38 or episode 38 for the Beauville in Newtown it happens to be uh, two days after the train show actually three days after the meet and greet this past weekend and of course I don't remember the date it happens to be October the 18th of 2022 this is episode 38 for 2022 welcome aboard track gang um got a few things that we need to go into um obviously like I said this past weekend was the uh meet and greet train show in the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum. Um, I've got a few shout outs that I want to go over. Um, uh, folks that came by, uh, folks that I saw the train show and then folks that actually came back here to the house. Um, it was an interesting couple of days. Uh, it was a lot of fun, a little bit of hilarity. Um, there's going to be some links to some other videos from some other channels in the description below and also links to the channels of the folks that actually came to the train show and hung out for a bit and then came back to the house as well. So, moving along, <laughs> um, on Saturday at the train show, the Timonium train show, uh, we had Chris from RB, RBP Trains, uh, Sean from Dacman Productions, uh, Heath from Humanity Junction, and by the way, this is in no particular order, uh, Dave Sparky 107107, 107. Uh, Steve, uh, also known as the Plumber 33, uh, Ted Heimball, he does not have a channel, but he happens to be a local model railroader. Shout out to Ted, I did see him, didn't get a chance to talk to him though. Uh, Joe Rader from the Black Rock Central, uh, Anthony from the Georgia Sunbelt, uh, Ron from uh, Ron Montague's uh, channel, uh, Damian Lawfer was here, Damian Lawfer's channel, Tom from Tom's Trains and Things. Uh, Rick and John from the Fultz Bailey Model Railroad, uh, Bernard from Mini Prince, uh, Alan from the Mason Dixon Railroad, uh, Rodney, Hot Rod Rodney 25, Ken BNO 51, and Ron Piskel uh, were all at the train show. Um, that was Saturday during the day. Saturday evening, some of us wandered back here to the Beauville Newtown for um a bit of a i guess an after show um and an open house um we had a little bit of a cookout i finally did break down the side to have a cookout between heath and, and tom uh basically planting the seed and uh we went from there so those that actually came back to the house and hung out for a couple of hours uh heath from humanity junction dave sparky 107 107 steve the plumber 33 um, Anthony from the Georgia Sunbelt, uh, Ron Montague, uh, Tom from Tom's Trains and Things, uh, Rick and John from the Fultz Bailey Model Railroad, uh, Bernard from Mini Prince, uh, Alan from the Mason Dixon, and Hot Rod Rodney 25. Uh, all came back and hung out here with me for a bit. Now, uh, one of the videos, which was one that was put up by Heath over at Humanity Junction, he called it the Dysfunctional Operations. And believe it or not, but I actually had enough guys here that we probably could have operated this thing. Uh, but there were two problems. Uh, the first problem is uh, most folks that were here were DCC guys. Um, there, in fact, I think myself and Rodney were probably the only two DC guys in the house. Um, so there's a bit of a learning curve with this thing um, for operations. And I really wasn't set up to do that. Uh, so what I ended up doing was just turning on uh, two of the trains and just letting them loop the layout um, while we were all sitting here shooting the breeze and having a good old time. Um, and it was great. Um, it was absolutely wonderful to have folks, model railroad folks, in the house. Um, I'm hoping we get a chance to do it again. Hopefully it doesn't take as long as it's taken to get people over here. 
Um, and who knows, maybe the next time I can go ahead and do a little bit of a introduction and a little bit of a, a training session before we actually get into trying to do a operating session on this thing, which is something that I would still love to do. Um, one of the other things that came out of this past weekend was the fact that there are quite a few of us that are somewhat local. I'm going to say by local, I mean by like two hours or less from each other. Um, a lot of us are very, very close geographically. And it would be kind of neat to have, you know, maybe some open houses and maybe be able to go to other folks' houses and see their railroads and talk to the folks that built them. Um, and be able to maybe even do some operations as well. Um, that could possibly be something that may happen in the future. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. Um, and then Sunday, that was all Saturday. Uh, I think we hung out here at my house from about 5 o'clock until about 8 o'clock, 8.30 uh, Saturday night. Um, and then uh, Sunday, uh, there were some folks that actually went down to the b &O Railroad Museum. And that would be myself, uh, Heath, uh, Ron, um, Tom from Tom's Trains and Things, and then Rick and uh, John from the Volts Bailey Model Railroad. Um, we all went down to the b &O Museum and hung out basically pretty much all day down there. Um, from about, I'm going to say probably about 10-ish uh, until about 3-ish, I think it was, maybe a little bit later. Um, we're going to have to do some stuff like that again. There's there's no question, um, you know, it was just, it was just a blast um, to be able to hang out with other model railroaders. It's always a lot of fun. Um, and who knew when I started this channel back in 2014, that number one, that I would kind of be the quote unquote uh, host and uh, person that was gonna put something like this together to have a local meet and greet, uh, to which there were some, obviously there were folks that came in from out of town too. I mean, it wasn't all just local folks, um, but you know, to, to be, <laughs> To be able to do that, and not only that, but it's one of the things that I see every once in a while that comes across the internet, and that is the fact that years and years and years ago, we used to sit there and say, well, you don't want to meet somebody on the internet, and you don't want to meet get, get into a vehicle from somebody that you don't know, and nowadays, well, we're meeting people on the internet, and not only that, but we're calling people and or going into Ubers, which we're getting off of the internet, and we're getting into strange cars and doing whatever. So, <laughs> you know, times change. It is what it is. Um, but anyway, I the other thing that happened this weekend is this rig, I actually took this camera to the train show. I made a mistake. I forgot to take a spare battery, and I forgot to take the battery that I used to charge this thing. Oops. And I wanted to turn it on, but I didn't want the light to come on. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I just realized that I didn't have the battery pack on. Um but I forgot to take the battery pack with me. And um, I wasn't sure how long the thing was gonna last and I was afraid that if I started taking pictures and taking, taking video that I would kill the battery and then, well, you know, I'd still have the stuff but I would miss half the stuff that I really wanted to take. So, it is what it is. Uh, but on Sunday, I ended up taking the NX300 down to the, train, uh, down to the museum and I use that instead, and I got some great pictures. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop here for a minute, and we're going to swing over and take care of that. And then we're going to get into the next part of this video, which is uh, the train show hall and a, uh, and a bit of a mail call. So we'll be back. <music>
so we got past the pictures. Now I'm going to go over what I got from the train show. <clears throat> um, if you notice, it's a little dark down here because there's something coming up after the <clears throat> after the uh, the train show hall. Um, so we're going to go ahead and swing down here a minute, and uh, I'm going to show you what I picked up at the train show. And I can literally blame Heath for this. Um, We just about get into the show and we go over to see Mini Prince, Bernard over at Mini Prince. And <clears throat> we stood there for a little bit, I think it was, or I was kind of standing over there talking to Sparky and, and Bernard for a little bit and watching what was going on. And then Heath comes back over and says, your passenger cars are sitting over there. <laughs> um... I think I got a heck of a deal on these. Uh, if you remember a little bit back, I had issues with the Rivrossis, uh, to which uh, I think I've actually found somebody that's going to take them off my hands. So that's a good thing. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Amos. Um, Ken Amos Jr., b 51 I uh, believe is going to take the Rivrossis off my hands, uh, which will be good. Um, so what I got is seven passenger cars painted up for the Bonhomme in Ohio and the same blue and gray scheme as the one that I had. Now what's interesting with this set because I was looking at it the other night um, I've got a a couple of coaches I think um, I think I've got two coaches two Pullmans I've got a diner and I've got two com uh, two um, uh, RPOs which is kind of nice. That's great. And then I've got my, the other one that I had, which is a baggage car. So I think ultimately what I'm going to end up with is a probably two, four car trains out of this. Uh, one will be pulled by the Beauville and Newtown PA one. And the other one for the time being will be pulled by the Chessie system, uh, FP seven. Um, that will, and I will eventually, when I get to it, paint up <clears throat> the other FP7s that I have for the Beauville and Newtown, and then that Chessie one will actually go back to freight service. But that was part, that was the train show haul. Now, I am going to push them back out of the way for a moment, because then, um, <clears throat> Heath, being who he is, the nice guy that he is, you know, knows that I've had issues with lighting down here, so he decides he's going to help me out. Um, I'm going to open because I haven't opened this box up yet. I have no idea what's in here. I believe that this is light bulbs from the looks of it. But I'm probably cutting this thing off, off camera, which is fine. And that is exactly what they are. They are light bulbs. <laughs> All right. So we've got two LED style light bulbs in here. I'm not sure what the, um, let me see what the, uh, these are 3000 lumen But it doesn't tell me what the what the actual uh, wattage is compared to ones I had. Um, I actually have uh, four left in this box. These are soft white uh, LEDs, and these here are supposed to be 65 watt, even though they're not. <laughs> they're they're replacement. They're only they're only using nine watt, but they're <clears throat> they are 65 watt. So we'll, we'll, we'll play around and see what we get there. But the reason why he did this is from, he, he sent me another package, this one from Amazon. This one I did open up already. And it is these guys. Now what this is, is a, uh, I guess for, Lack of a better term, it is a uh, extender, and I can also uh, aim the LED lights. So this will be nice. 
I have to take a look and see exactly, and that's the reason why it's dark down here. I'm letting the incandescents cool off so I can actually touch them. And then the day I got yet another box, and I'm going to open up this one off camera because I don't, I didn't bother to uh, mark out the address. Now, from what I understand from Heath, this here is um, also LED torch star under cabinet lighting. You know, I had actually thought about, at one point, uh, getting or using under cabinet lighting down here. Uh, and that wasn't nice. Oh, I was supposed to open it there and there. Okay. All right. Um... But actually using under now this is not what I had thought they were but this is cool these are actually light strips okay so we'll have to see how these work and of course one of my one of my thoughts was originally and the reason why I didn't try to do LED is because of the fact that I didn't know if they were dimmable. Uh, of course, then I got this wonderful ring light that I use, and of course, it is dimmable. So anyway, I am going to, um, uh, let me go ahead, I'm just gonna swing the camera a minute. Well, actually, I'm gonna stop the camera for a minute. I'm gonna go turn the lights on real quick, do a quick shot, and then I'm gonna turn them back. Well, actually, you've seen, you've seen what this looks like with the lights on, so I'm gonna go ahead and change out some light bulbs, and we'll be back. Well, I can tell you this, <laughs> um, the light bulbs that, uh, that Heath sent are uh, a bit bright um, <laughs> compared, to, compared to what I had. Now, one of the other issues that I've got, and I don't know if I can fix it or not, um, <clears throat> is that the, uh, the pots are way up. In, up inside uh, I don't know if they're adjustable or not so I can't even angle this thing the the angle that angle piece that he gave me is way up inside so I'm not even sure if that's gonna help um, I think I don't know what um, Yeah, these are 3,000 lumens, where I think the ones that I had, or the other ones that I have, and I can show you the difference in them. It doesn't even, oh, yeah, 665 lumens. So that's the difference. <laughs> and one of those bulbs... is uh, over here. That's one, this one here is one of the uh, 60, or 650 lumens, is, what I, is that what I said? And the other ones are 3,000? Yeah, 665 lumens. So there, there is a little bit of a difference. Um, the other thing is, is I've only got one more of the 665 lumen bulbs left. Um, I've got to look at this other bulb and figure out what it is. That's a 620 lumen bulb. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to mess with this a little bit. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got to see if these, uh, see if these lights are actually adjustable to bring the, uh, the pot down. But I think what I might end up doing is, for the time being, is just taking out that angle bracket and just sticking them up inside. Um, we'll see. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try that real quick, and then um, we'll be back. All right, folks. You ready for this one? <clears throat> so, <laughs> you, 
Hello. <laughs> wow. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. That is a lot better than the little gooseneck light that I had sitting back here to try and light things up. Um, no doubt. <clears throat> amazing. Um, absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I've actually got one light left. Uh, what I ended up doing, what I was hoping to do, was have one light that was right here. But because of the brace that's here that's holding up the shelving, I couldn't do that. So it's actually off to one side, which isn't that big of a deal. Um, so I've got, on this side, I've got two. I've actually, I've got two. I've got one here. I've got one here. And then on the other side, we've got one, two, and then the third one is actually out here. Now, one of the issues that I did have when I was putting this together, though, I couldn't get the screws into the boards. Uh, so right now, they're just that double-sided tape stuck up there. I hope it holds. We'll see. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'll have to come up with another idea. The other thing I have to come up with is some way of getting uh, the, uh, the actual uh, switch out of my way. And I think I know how I'm going to do that. I'm actually just going to run that up over the back. So I think what we're going to do here for the moment... Notice that uh, you know, I just happened to notice that one of these tracks on the uh, RBC distribution wasn't actually connected correctly. Not that a freight car should be that far down the run, but it's amazing the things that you actually find. see if I can't find some way of working that out, but that's okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some way of making sure that the power, the power pack stays where I want it, and then I'll work on... Uh, getting the wiring back in place, but that is, wow, <laughs> what a difference that makes. Um, might be a bit bright, but um, considering the fact that once I actually get the, the backdrop all the way across, it, it might not be a bad thing to have it a little brighter. Um, so... Um, there was one other thing, and I'm going to get to that in a minute here, but we're going to stop and we'll be right back. So before I forget about it, there was one more mail call, <laughs> sort of mail call, I guess, and that came from the Folds Bailey Model Railroad. Um, if you're interested, talk to Rick. He's got these cups. Um, you actually have to talk to him about them because they're not he, he's making them himself so um i think that's going to do it for this video <laughs> uh i know it's quite long but it is what it is again appreciate everybody coming into town this weekend that came in i know a few people couldn't make it we'll get together at some point 
You all know the deal. Wait for the highball. Green tracks ahead. We'll catch you all next time. Be safe. God bless. We will see ya.